Hey guys, welcome to MuseThemes.com. My name is Ashton. Today we're covering our Genius Gallery widget. It's a pre-styled gallery using an arrangement of the native composition widgets that you find in Muse. There's no extra code or widget components to be added to your workflow, but as you can see from the demo here, it allows for a pretty comprehensive gallery to showcase just about anything you'd need, with a lot of room for photos and text. The gallery comes with these six thumbnails, which all have customizable hover states, and when clicked, bring up a pretty slick display with lots of info, a nice hero image, plenty of room for links, all in this really nice light box. You can easily click outside of the content area to close it, or just click this button, which is a customizable close button. And moving down here, you can click these arrows, allowing you to navigate multiple pages of this gallery, which you can add to and take away from to your heart's content. So there's a lot you can do with this widget, but given the complex nature of how it's laid out using compositions, it can be a bit tricky at first if you haven't worked with it before. So let's go into Muse and dive in. First thing as always, we'll drag the widget out onto the page. And immediately you can see pretty much exactly what you saw reflected in the demo. So let's take a little tour. First off, this dark blue fill. This is just a simple full width rectangle, which can be revised or deleted. It's not actually connected to the gallery in any way. Now inside here, it's important to understand that this widget is operating as one master composition with a bunch of mini compositions placed inside of it. So to hopefully avert confusion, I'm going to cover this in two sections. And first we'll cover how to use these inner thumbnails and their light boxes, and then we'll move to using the multiple pages as you saw in the demo by clicking those arrows. So starting with this first page of thumbnails here, each of these thumbnails is a completely separate composition. So to edit the light box, you need to open the light box for any of the given thumbnails here inside of the settings panel. Now don't get confused with the settings panel for the encompassing composition. You'll see if I click once on this composition, that selects the entire composition. So opening up this settings panel and clicking the light box check mark, that's going to turn on and off the light box for the entire encompassing composition, and we don't want to do that. So what you need to do is click on a specific thumbnail two or three times until you get the settings panel button for that specific thumbnail. So now we can open this settings panel and turn on the light box. There. So now that we have this up, you can add, remove, and revise all the content in here as you wish. We have a nice hero image here that you can change out by using the fill menu. Lots of text and hyperlinks scattered around, which are great. Now let's take a look at this back to projects button. Now this isn't like a normal button that you would create from scratch, but rather it's a revised close button that comes with any regular composition widget. So I can click on this button and open the settings panel. And by deselecting this close prompt, you'll see that the button disappears. So just make sure that if you want to change the wording or the appearance of your close button, that you do it to the actual close button associated with the composition. So now if we want to close this light box, as before, I just want to note to be careful which light box that you're actually closing. For the sake of the demo, I'm going to change the background color of my target here so you can see the difference. We'll go ahead and uh, make it a darker blue. Now again, just like before, you see if I only click on this once, the selected outline that shows up, that's not for my target window. That's actually for the composition as a whole. So you need to make sure that you're selecting your target as a whole and opening the settings panel from there to close the light box. Another way you can do it, just for safe measure, you can always select any of the elements inside the target, and that'll be sure to open the proper settings panel for you to close. Just like that. Cool. So we'll leave that closed for now, but that process can be repeated for each of your thumbnails spanning all of your pages. So you can have independently customized light boxes for each different element of the gallery, which is pretty cool. So now let's talk about the thumbnails themselves. To change the images, just like before, Click on any of the thumbnails a few times until you've selected the specific thumbnail that you want. Once you do so, you can visit the fill menu up here to change out your photos. Now, when selecting these thumbnails individually, if you take a look up here at your states menu on the top left, you'll notice that Muse actually defaults to the active state, meaning the photo that's supposed to show after the thumbnail is clicked. So if I simply change the photo as it stands now, which I'll go ahead and do, there we go. The photo will then be reflected in your Muse workspace. But if I go ahead and just preview this in a browser, you'll see that the old photo is still showing. That's because you need to make sure you're visiting each state of your thumbnail and revising it accordingly. So I could select the thumbnail once again, switch over to the normal state, and change the photo here as well. 
Now to change the rollover and mouse down states. There's a slightly different setup going on here. If I select my thumbnail again, and let's look at the rollover state. You can actually see here that there's nothing there but a white border. What it's actually doing is making this trigger see-through on rollover, and the content you're seeing is actually placed behind it. So we can move this thumbnail to the side, and you can customize that rollover content right here. So I'll go ahead and change this rollover color, and we'll change the type to Muse Themes. And lastly, we'll move the trigger back on top where it was prior. So now if we preview it in a browser once again, you'll see our new photo reflected on the normal state and all of our rollover settings have been applied. Now lastly, really quick, let's cover the various pages that this composition comes with. The simplest way to navigate through the pages is by clicking the actual arrows down here. Now the only thing you're seeing changing is the photo here on the first thumbnail, and that's because both pages come preloaded the same. But by clicking these, we are alternating pages. Now the widget comes loaded with two pages already, but to add more pages, you're going to want to take a look at these little boxes down here in the corner. These are the actual triggers for the encompassing composition. So I'm going to click a couple times until I have just the target selected, and we'll go ahead and move that out of the way for a moment. So you can see by clicking these triggers that they reveal their corresponding targets. So to add more, you're just going to go ahead and click this small plus sign. Now we have a third page added, which is blank, but you can easily copy over all the content from the previous pages. So just pull up another target and a simple copy and paste will do it. Just make sure that you're copying all the content, even that sneaky stuff that you'll find behind the main trigger. So that is our genius gallery widget. It's an awesomely slick and stylish way to utilize a basic Muse composition, but in a very detailed and comprehensive fashion. So we hope you like it and have fun with it. And if you run into any issues at all, we're always here to help. Thanks.